Hey everyone, it's Stephanie again, and you are tuned into the review of Married at First Sight, Season 12, Reunion Part 2. So, last night's episode, well, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when I post these videos. Alright, let's jump into it. I don't have much, you guys. This season has been the longest season ever. And they have found a way to draw it out even longer. I thought last night's episode was the last one, which they really didn't need to do a two-part reunion. Um, but I believe that there is another episode, like a follow-up episode. I didn't even see that. I saw that on social media this morning um, about how they're doing after the fact. Like, you guys... A lifetime I get it this is a big hit for you guys but you gotta give us better content last night was probably the most drawn-out episode of this season um, it didn't need to be two parts and there was so much time I felt like this season there was so much time kind of like explaining away what happened or you can tell this season they really looked at the comments they looked at a, probably a lot of reviewers got a lot of feedback about what people were saying and kind of tried to explain it the segment with you know pastor cal dr viviana um dr pepper it was cool because it was different um but once again you know we we see them at the beginning of the season um where they do the matchmaking process and then we see we don't see them as often throughout the process as we would like where we're kind of saying hello somebody needs to jump in here we don't really see them that often um and then they come towards the end of the season or like bits and pieces and then now there's this segment with them and we spent a lot of time with Chris which the episode this reunion episode started with Chris again and his tantrum and Paige running to rescue him and you know that in itself is problematic the, the need to rescue him and you know if, at this point if things are really segmented um then let him act out and don't feel the need to be a part of it or to support it or to bring him back. That coddling is why he behaves the way he behaves. Um, you know, her friend coming on, I thought that that was interesting. Um, but I get not ruining the wedding day, but probably after the fact, here's something that I heard that concerned me. Not the day of, but here's something that I heard concerned me do what you feel you need to do as you get to know this individual if you decide to continue on this process but as a close friend of yours like here's what he told us you know it's not even like hey don't say that no he was bold enough to tell us so i'm going to have your back and telling you so they had that dialogue um and she was honest about the fact that Paige isn't in the best space um you know <sighs> we've talked about Paige so much we've talked about Chris so much you know we've talked about the hopes that we want for her um but they really beat her down this season and bringing it back up again it just got exhausting when they had them together as a group they had the guy separately it, it was like a million ways to draw out two hours that were unnecessary um Jacob and Haley that exchange was incredibly petty I mean here's the thing if you watch Mean Girls I don't know if you guys have seen Mean Girls but there's this one scene where one of the girls keeps trying to say the word fetch and make it a thing and they're like you can't you can't make fetch happen that's literally what I thought of um when I watched Jake and Haley like we're we're trying to say well he's this and she could be this and she's not this and he's not this it's two people who were vastly wrong for each other and it didn't work she checked out early he was kind of petty i feel like kevin really gave him a hard time though kevin should have given Haley a hard time just like she gave jacob that was the only thing that irritated me jacob has his faults like i know we all you know well a lot of us will see Haley a little bit more because she's aloof and she kind of shut down and you could tell that jacob wanted something out of it um but jacob has his faults he's not perfect um but bringing it up over and over my husband and I talked about that a lot bringing it up over and over and um discussing 
the level of attraction or lack thereof we said like if he could just chill and just have a good time and just be himself or not give her so much attention because i think she thrived on the attention that he wanted her and so that gave her more mean girl power or whatever just it, honestly ignore her have a good time don't make it a thing and maybe they could have gotten to a place but kevin really gave it to him didn't really give it to her i don't necessarily think that sex was trying the way that Haley, um based on what we've seen from her i feel like sex was like the okay let me just do this and just see how it goes she's trying to make it seem because she has kevin's support as like i really wanted a connection and so i did that for a connection you were drunk you said let me just do this and see what what's it what is it talking about and it wasn't talking about nothing for you and that's just what happened it wasn't like a genuine i don't get that genuine effort from her because we kind of saw that at the beginning she kind of shut down and it was weird um but they were just two people who were really really wrong and i don't think people who are good people need to be together all the time meaning that just because if that's the attribute that they have he's a really good guy or she's a really sweet girl doesn't make for a perfect match it's evident in Haley and uh jacob and we just saw a petty back and forth and undercutting and low blows and it was just like what are you know what are we doing here you know now there's a retelling of a story and one person says it didn't happen and it did happen who like we'll never know um but we just know that that was not a great match um chris and Paige. Mm. i'm glad he didn't show up because it would have been i'm glad he didn't show up to the group dynamic because it would have been the chris show again because they would have turned their attention to him um and you know i don't know virginia and eric in that group dynamic virginia kind of saying hey you know i didn't say i wanted to sleep at my friend's house when i'm married it's like you guys were watching the comments and you're like now explaining yourself same thing with the um the experts Ex lots of explanations but it's like how could you not know these things were going on the production team has is there 24 hours or however long they're there they're there a significant amount of time you know things are going on there has to be a line of communication so i feel like some of the lack of involvement was like intentional so that they can figure it out themselves so that the drama can build um so once again the explaining away if we would have known blah 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 if he would have shown sure he came he showed up he pretended he was this guy yeah a lot of people present well um so we can't a lot of people say, well, how could they not know? A lot of people present, I'm a therapist, a lot of people present well. I've worked with some people who present exceptionally well and, you know, they're not what they present. Um, so that's easy to do. We can't, we can't expect them to be mind readers or have some knowledge that they're not, they do the best that they can. However, when things start to happen so quickly, like they did in this season, I just don't get why the involvement wasn't there um back to virginia her saying that's not what i said would happen when i got married it's just something that could happen you whined about it most of the season about being able to do whatever you want to do and if you are too drunk to get home then you want to sleep on some i mean I, she was like a broken record with the whining about needing to be able to do that and be out drinking thursday friday Saturday. so sitting here like that's not what i meant what did you mean we can go on and on and apparently i will go on next week because there's this one episode i will say that despite what I, what we're seeing which the three couples are together vincent and brianna um eric and virginia and clara and ryan there's still some incongruencies that i'm seeing with eric and virginia so I don't, I still don't see that as being long lasting. I'm really hopeful though. Like with this whole experiment, I love love, so I'm excited for it, but I'm also not gonna pretend like it is something, even if they're showing me that. Like I, that's just the type of person that I am. I will go with my gut. And so yes, they're still together. Yes, they're making it work, but I don't see long lasting for them. It's unfortunate, but I don't. Claire and Ryan, I still, I don't know, but they got something going on that they didn't share with us. But Eric and Virginia, that's still, it's still like a, there's a lot of body language that just doesn't measure up with what they're saying. And based on how we've seen them throughout the season, you know, they're they're not the greatest match. Um, to me, the way that I match them well is like if like five years into the future, or if there's like some 
uh, maturation on Virginia's end, some shifts, and then some shifts and some relaxation on Eric's end as well. So um, time will tell. I mean, let me know what you guys see because there's so much on social media now and people are, you know, people see them in real life. So they're like, hmm, things aren't measuring up. So what we're seeing on TV is not necessarily always what's happening in real life. All right, guys, so let me know what you thought about last night's episode, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you here for one more week of season 12. Everyone have a great weekend.